Moving forward with our ball script, let us now initialize new balls when our ball gets hit by a rocket. So here I'm going to create void instantiate balls. What we are going to do inside of this function, because we are going to instantiate the balls for each ball except for the smallest ball. When the smallest ball get, gets hit, it will be destroyed, it will not create a new ball. So for that we need to check if this.gameObject.tag so that tag is not equal to smallest ball, meaning if the ball that currently has this script is not the smallest ball. So if it's the largest, the small, the medium, it does not matter. But what matters is it's not the smallest ball. If that's true, then what we are going to do is we are going to say ball one is equal to instantiate and here we are going to use original ball. So create a copy out of our original ball and place it in ball one. And I'm going to copy and paste this line of code and here our ball two is also equal to that same well instantiate. So create a copy of it. We also need to set their names. If we use it like this, if we create our balls like this, the names of our balls, for example, if we create a large ball, so if the original ball is the large ball and we create them like this, the name of ball one and ball two is going to be large ball clone. So this is going to be the name of it. So let me just type it right. So clone. So like this, we are going to have the name of our ball if we create it. And that's not good because here we are using the split dot name. If we don't or if we let mono behavior or unity rename the ball like that, when we get here the name of the ball using the split, we are going to have this. We are going to have ball.clone or ball clone. We are not going to have ball alone and that's well going to make this core code not work or it will well practically this code will not work because of that. So we are going to check if we have the ball, but we are going to have ball.clone. So because of that, we are going to go here and we are going to say ball1.name is equal to original ball.name. So this is going to change the name of our ball. We are going to do the same thing for the second one. And we also need to get their script. So we need to say ball1 script. So ball1 script is equal to ball1 get component ball script. And we are going to do the same thing for the second one. So ball2 script is going to be equal to ball2 get component. So here ball1, that's ball1 script is equal to ball1 get component. And we are going to get the ball script component. And here ball2 script is equal to ball2 get component. And we are going to get the ball script component. So remember that. So for the ball2 use ball2 that get component in order to get that component. Now that we have this function created, we need to create a new function and this is going to be initialize balls and turn off current ball. So inside of this function, we are first going to call instantiate. So instantiate balls in order to create both of them. So what we are doing here, actually creating all of the balls or the two that we need to split our well, ball, current ball to split into two. And now what we need to do here is we need to get the position of our ball. So we need to say vector three temp is equal to transform that position because we need to instantiate our two balls at the same position where the current ball is. And here we need to say ball one that transform that position is equal to temp and also our ball two that transform that position is equal to temp. And now we need to set their movement. So one of the balls needs to move left and the other one needs to move right. In order to do that, we need to create here a public void set move left. So bool move left. And we also need to well create a public void set move right bool move right. Now inside of this function, what we are going to do is we are going to say move left is equal to our move left or this dot move left again this referring to this class so this class and this move left is equal to the move left that we are passing here and we also need to say this dot move right so move right is equal to the opposite so it's going to be equal to the opposite of move left and notice i'm adding this exclamation mark now this exclamation mark is going to make anything 
that's after it the opposite. So if this move left is true, then the exclamation mark will make it false. So then this will be false. If it's true, then the exclamation, excuse me, if it's false, the exclamation mark will make it true. So here, what we are going to do also in our move right, we are going to say this dot move right is equal to move right. So move right. And this dot move left is equal to, well, the opposite of our move right that we are passing right here. And in order to make this, well, not confusing, or we can say here can move left. And here we can also set can move left like this and can move right. And here we can also set can move right. So this will be more clear now. So we are setting the move left of our script, which is this one right here to be equal to the parameter that we are passing here. And here we can set our ball one to move left. So we can say ball one dot or ball one script, excuse me, dot move or set move left to be equal to true. So it will set the move left to true and move right to false. And here for our ball two dot script, so not so ball two script, excuse me, set move right to be equal to true. And we can also go here in our on trigger enter. So here, instead of setting move right to false and then move left to true, we can simply say here, set move left to true like this, and this will take care of the rest for us. And here we can say set move right to true. And as I said, this can well take, or it will take care all of the other things for us. Now, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to give a little boost to our balls. So how can we do that actually? Well, we are going to use our ball one dot get component and we are going to get the rigid body 2D and we're going to say dot velocity is equal to new vector two. And we are going to give a little boost. So when we create them, we are going to well boost them up a little bit so it will have a nicer effect. So let's say we are going to add one and we can also change this. So we can, I don't know, set it at three and then we can change it or 2.5. So you can change it to whatever you like. And also here for the ball two, we are going to do the same thing. And now we are going to use our audio source that play clip at point. And here we are going to pass our pop sounds and we are going to pass for the index random dot range between zero and pop sounds dot length. And we are going to play it at transform dot position. And at the end, we are going to say game object dot or simply say set active to be equal to false to deactivate our game object. Now, what we are actually doing here is we are playing a random sound clip. So when we use random dot range, it's going to return, well, a random number between a minimum and a maximum. So if we pass four and 10, it's going to return a number between four and 10. It will not include the number 10. So it will return numbers from four up to nine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, not including 10. So it's a perfect function to use for arrays because if we actually return this number right here and we use here array that length, it will return the rank of the array, array, excuse me, and that will, well, make an array index out of bounds exception. And anyway, here we are playing the sounds, which I commented out. We are going to uncomment that later. And here we are setting our game object to be equal to false because we are deactivating that game object. Okay, let us see this well in action. So we can go here in our on trigger enter and we can check if our target dot, so target dot tag is equal to rocket. So if we touch the rocket with one of our balls, what we are going to do is we are going to check if our game object dot tag is not equal to the smallest ball. So here, smallest ball. Why we're doing it like this? Well, because we are not going to instantiate new balls if we, well, if the current ball is the smallest one, because the smallest ball is not going to, well, split into two smaller balls. Here I'm going to say initialize balls and turn off current ball. And else here, what I'm going to say, and we are going to play our sound. So I'm simply going to copy this, or I can copy both of these 
because we are going to play our sound and deactivate our game object. Now, in order to see this in action, we need to go here in our Unity, editor that is, and we need to select all of our balls and make sure that you have attached, well, our ball script. And for the pop sounds, for each of these, we are going to set the size to be two and we are going to attach ball explosion and ball explosion two. Now for each individual ball, so the largest ball is going to hold the medium ball. So the largest ball is going to split, or excuse me, the large ball is going to split on two medium balls. The largest ball is going to split on two large balls. The medium ball is going to split on two small balls. And the small ball is going to split on two smallest balls. So attach those game objects here where it says original ball. And now we can test this out. So we have checked move right for our ball. And notice now when our ball touches the rocket, so when we shoot it, when it touches the rocket, it splits into two smaller balls and it continues to bounce. And we see that we did not assign a reference for our smallest ball. So let me just see what we did wrong here. So yeah, so here we need to check if this dot tag is not equal to our smallest ball. Let me just go here and select the smallest ball and we see that we did not tag it. So we need to tag it as the smallest ball. So the small ball is also tagged. So let me just tag it as a small ball. And the medium needs to be tagged as the medium ball. The largest ball is tagged as the largest and the large ball needs to be tagged as the large ball. So excuse me, I forgot to tag these. So make sure that each ball is tagged with a corresponding tag. So the largest one will be the largest ball the large ball will be the large ball, medium, medium ball, so on and so forth, tag them with the correct tags. So now if I run the game and if we shoot all of our balls, so we see that they are splitting. If I shoot the smallest one, it's simply going to deactivate. And this is the end for this video. And in the next video, what we are going to do, and we see that we can also, well, shoot, well, how many times we want. So in order to strict our player into doing this, what we are going to do in the next video, we are going to correct that. We are also going to correct that when the ball touches, touches our player, the player will die. And all of that, we are going to wrap it up in the next video. So if you like what you see, like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your friends to watch these videos. They are educational. You can learn game programming. Anyway, I will see you in the next video.